Tushan, read by Robert Hafs. Knowledge accords with things, being in one and the same realm, made by conditions, tacitly conjoining, without rejecting anything, suddenly appearing, yet not without before and after. Therefore, Scripture says, the sphere of the universal I, EYE, the pure body, I now will expound, let people listen carefully. By way of explanation, the universal I is the union of knowledge and reality, all at once revealing many things. This makes it clear that reality is known to the knowledge of the universal I only, and is not the sphere of any other knowledge. The sphere means things. This illustrates how the many things interpenetrate like the realm of Indra's net of jewels, multiplied and remultiplied ad infinitum. The pure body illustrates how all things, as mentioned before, simultaneously enter one another. Ends and beginnings, being collectively formed by conditional origination, are impossible to trace to a basis. The seeing mind has nothing to rest on. Now, the celestial jewel net of Kanishka, or Indra, Emperor of Gods, is called the net of Indra. This imperial net is made all of jewels. Because the jewels are clear, they reflect one another's images, appearing in one another's reflections upon reflections, ad infinitum, all appearing at once in one jewel. And in each one it is so. Ultimately, there is no going or coming. Now, for a moment, let us turn to the southwest direction and pick a jewel and examine it. This jewel can show the reflection of all the jewels at once. And just as this is so of this jewel, so it is of every other jewel. The reflection is multiplied and remultiplied over and over, endlessly. These infinitely multiplying jewel reflections are all in one jewel and show clearly. The others do not hinder this. If you sit in one jewel, then you are sitting in all the jewels in every direction, multiplied over and over. Why? Because in one jewel, there are all the jewels. If there is one jewel in all the jewels, then you are sitting in all the jewels too. And the reverse applies to the totality, if you follow the same reasoning. Since in one jewel, you go into all the jewels without leaving this one jewel, so in all jewels, you enter one jewel without leaving this one jewel. Question. If you say that one enters all the jewels in one jewel without ever leaving this one jewel, how is it possible to enter all the jewels? Answer. It is precisely by not leaving this one jewel that you can enter all the jewels. If you left this one jewel to enter all the jewels, you couldn't enter all the jewels. Why? Because outside this jewel, there are no separate jewels. Question. If there are no jewels outside this one jewel, then this net is made of one jewel. How can you say, then, that it's made of many jewels tied together? Answer. It is precisely because there is one jewel that many can be joined to form a net. Why? Because this one jewel alone forms the net. That is, if you take away this jewel, there will be no net. Question. If there is only one jewel, how can you speak of tying it into a net? Answer. Tying many jewels to form a net is itself just one jewel. Why? One is the aspect of totality, containing the many in its formation. Since all would not exist if there were not one, this net is therefore made by one jewel. The all entering the one can be known by thinking about it in this way. Question. Although the jewel in the southwest contains all the jewels in the ten directions completely, without remainder, there are jewels in every direction. How can you say, then, that 
the net is made of just one jewel? Answer. All the jewels in the ten directions are, in totality, the one jewel of the southwest. Why? The jewel in the southwest is all the jewels of the ten directions. If you don't believe that one jewel in the southwest is all the jewels of the ten directions, just put a dot on the jewel in the southwest. When one jewel is dotted, there are dots on all the jewels in all directions. Since there are dots on all the jewels in all directions, we know that all the jewels are one jewel. If anyone says that all the jewels in the ten directions are not one jewel in the southwest, could it be that one person simultaneously put dots on all the jewels in the ten directions? Even allowing the universal dotting of all the jewels in the ten directions, they are just one jewel. Since it is thus, using this one as beginning, the same is so when taking others first, multiplied over and over boundlessly, each dot is the same. It is obscure and hard to fathom. When one is complete, all is done. Such a subtle metaphor is applied to things to help us think about them. But things are not so. A simile is the same as not a simile. They resemble each other in a way, so we use it to speak of. What does this mean? These jewels only have their reflective images containing and entering one another. Their substances are separate. Things are not like them because their whole substance merges completely. The book on natural origination in the flower garland scripture says, in order to benefit sentient beings and make them all understand, non-similes are used to illustrate real truth. Such a subtle teaching as this is hard to hear, even in immeasurable eons. Only those with perseverance and wisdom can hear of the matrix of the issue of thusness. The scripture says, non-similes are used as similes. Those who practice should think of this in accord with the similes.